Hello and welcome to my presentation writing advanced CWLJS expressions in TypeScript. My name is Alexis Licatini. I work for the University of Melbourne's Centre for Cancer Research as a bioinformatician within the Genomics Platform Group. I would like to begin by acknowledging the Wurundjeri people, traditional custodians of the land of which I'm delivering this presentation to you today, and acknowledge the elders past and present. This presentation is on our Cedar World journey at UMCCR and the benefits I found of using TypeScript to create and maintain our Cedar World JavaScript expressions. Expressions are the glue that allow our workflows to run and we'd be in a lot of trouble without them. One of my main roles in the team is building CWL workflows for pushing our patient data through Illumina's connected analytics platform that allows us to run Dragon software through FPGAs, which are backed by AWS. This has allowed us to both scale and drastically reduce our overall processing time. I presented here a couple of years ago when we were on the cusp of making our CWL ICA repo public. A lot of work went into having this automated pipeline via GitHub Actions, which also then pushed back information to GitHub after interacting with the ICA API. We now have a system that auto builds our documentation based on the CWL labels, Docker attributes, and allows us to easily overwrite and update our workflows in our ICA development environment, whilst keeping all of our workflows and production immutable. We are also moving to a tag-based release system, which is in beta, so please head on and check out our releases page in the repository. Almost all of our production workflows use some form of object orientation in their inputs, so please have a look if you're curious about using CWL schemas. A link to the CWL ICA repo will be in the links at the end of this presentation. Okay, let's get into it. CWL allows for JavaScript expressions with the purpose of letting a tool run that may require a little bit of extra spice compared to a regular command line tool. This might be from updating an input value to have an extra suffix, to using conditional syntaxes depending on what inputs are present, to finding a file in the outputs that can't easily be globbed. We can also use CWLJS expressions in workflow steps, and this is useful if the output of one step doesn't quite match the required input format of a downstream, another downstream step. We may also wish to have a bash script in our initial work do listing, and we can actually place, place JavaScript in there. And that would be to dynamically build that bash script using the values of the inputs at runtime, which is pretty cool. Expressions are really powerful in CWL, but their usage is usually quite minimal. Why is that, you might ask? Well, CWL JavaScript expressions must conform to a very old version of JavaScript, so it's hard to know if what you're writing is conformant until CWL tool complains about it, which in my opinion is too late, because then what I've written is a waste of time. Expressions are often embedded in a multi-line YAML string inside the inline JavaScript requirements of a tool or workflow, making them hard to read and debug. And even if you can reading, read them, editing them is a steep learning curve and requires the knowledge of CWL classes. This is where TypeScript comes in. TypeScript allows for lovely syntax highlighting and code hinting in IDEs such as WebStorm and VS Code. Most importantly, it can transpile into ES5 conformant code, which is really cool. When writing with Cedar World TypeScript expressions, it can auto-complete attributes for you based on the variable's type class. We can complement our TypeScript code with the Jest framework to unit test our TypeScript functions before integrating them into our tools and workflows. And one pretty awesome part of this journey was developing a little Python script that could take a Cedar World schema and create a complementary TypeScript interface for this schema to use in TypeScript expressions. Some caveats. After transpiling to JavaScript, the code isn't always Cedar World compatible. We need to use some regex first. I've put all of this into an ugly sense script, so most of you won't need to deal with that. There's only been a couple of times in the last six months where I've had an issue transpiling, uh, but you should be able to detect these if you use the Jest framework since it tests both in TypeScript and JavaScript languages. So we've done the theory. Let's showcase this. Let's imagine we have a workflow with two steps. The first creating a directory that contains a BAM file. But let's say that BAM file isn't usually a relevant output for this tool and so isn't in the list of outputs for the tool, but we need it as an input for the second tool in this particular workflow. So we need a simple expression to collect a BAM file from the output directory objects listing attribute. Uh, so now I'm gonna enter into a live coding demo. Uh, so now I have my WebStorm project up. I'm going to run a quick command here in the terminal. This is a CWL ICA sub command, as you can see from the uh, output logs, it's actually just calling a shell script. So if you're not running serial ICA, you can just run that instead. Let's have a look what files have been created via the project viewer. Inside get bam file from directory version 1.0.0, we can see a few new files in here. Jest.config, no need to touch this. 
package.json contains the NPM dependencies that we need. TSConfig, the only important thing here is the target, which we have set to ES5. Now let's have a look at the template that it's created for us. The declare global backwards compatibility uh, section, and that's just for CDO or TS auto module. If you use that, uh, that's for ES5 backwards compatibility. Uh, it's no need to really worry about that. Today, I'm going to import the CWL classes file and directory from the Ravix CWL TS module. I renamed these to iFile and iDirectory since these are interfaces rather than classes, and I like to denote that with the i prefix. Interfaces differ from classes as there are no initialized properties or methods to help create objects. They merely define the properties and type an object can have. Okay, let's make our function. We're going to prefix with export, since we need to import the function into our test suite later on, then write the word function, and then the name get bam file from directory. This will take two inputs, directory, a directory object, and the file name, uh, which def defined, which is a string. The i file at the end denotes the function output, which should be of type file. We add in a quick little function description. Let's first check that the listing attribute uh, of our directory exists. We can see here that WebStorm is already hinting using the listing attribute for the directory variable, which is really cool. And let's throw an error if the directory uh, listing attribute doesn't exist. Now let's define our local variables, BAM file and BAM file index. We can't define them as files yet, so we can also we say that they can also be null. Let's use the filter method over our listing list and return all items that match our file name. It's really cool to see the IDE know that the items of the list are either file or directory too. Let's copy paste and use that same filter for the index, but add on the bam index suffix to the file name. Now let's check that that filter actually returns something and the bam file actually exists in that directory. If not, let's throw a descriptive error. Otherwise, we have our BAM file, and that's the first item of this array. Oh, we have an error here. Well, this is since we said our BAM file was an optional file, but this item is either a file or directory, and those may not match. We can fix this through type coercion and letting the compiler know we're confident that this is, in fact, a file object. Now let's check if the BAM file index exists. We don't want to error out if it doesn't, though. It should be an optional secondary file. Again, we use the type coercion to stop the IDE complaining, then attach this variable to the BAM files, secondary files attribute, and return the BAM file. Yay! Now for the testing part. Our wrapper script also creates the tests directory with a dummy test file inside. I'm again going to import the Ravix CWL TS directory and file interfaces and import get bam file from directory from the expression file we just created. In the interests of time, I'm going to copy and paste our expected inputs and outputs from this function. We create some files and one directory. We create a listing in this directory and add a dummy file here to make sure our function isn't just returning the first file in the list. We then add in the bam and bam index we created above. For our output expected file, we can then deep copy the BAM file object and add in the BAM index as a secondary file. Okay, let's update this dummy test and use some actual descriptions in the describe and test functions. Inside expect, we call our function with our inputs. And then we use the to match object method and place our expected output as the one parameter to to match object. We can then run the CWL ICA subcommand TypeScript expression validate. Again, you see that there is an actual underlying shell script there, so if you're not using CWL ICA, you can use that instead. Let's have a look in our tests directory now. We can see that there's a summary file, and yay, our tests have passed. Although we only had one test, it was run twice, once via TypeScript, and then again via JavaScript. Let's look at some more complex use cases. To run the Dragon tool I mentioned at the start, it needs to have a file called fastqlist.csv in the working directory. So we use a diary for that. However, the columns read one file and read two file must point to the path attributes of the fastq files, but these paths are only evaluated at the tool runtime. We also have other metadata attributes that we would like to link to each pair of fastq files. So the solution is to create a CWL schema for the inputs and then use some TypeScript magic to create the fastqlist.csv file at runtime of the Dragon tool. 
Using our TypeScript expressions, we're able to create a listing object where the entry is of a class file and the contents map to the items in the fastq list row inputs. This logic is used across all of our Dragon workflows, so using the TypeScript and Jest framework meant that we could test how this works with one row, multiple rows, one row with the keys reordered, and multiple rows with keys in different order to each item in that list. To make a new Dragon workflow now, one just has to import the Dragon expression file and call one single function. This means that the tool is clean, the logic has been well tested, dry typed, and we can all sleep well at night. Another advanced use case, so this is probably, probably the most advanced that I'm comfortable playing with at the moment. We can now specify a really large JSON that has all of the information required to create all of the split sample sheets we need for a BCL convert workflow run. This also improves the reproducibility. Previously specifying a file as a sample sheet meant that if that file was ever changed, then the workflow could not be replicated. This workflow uses a three-level nested schema, so please go and check that out if you're interested in CLL schemas. The input on the left shows the tasks input JSON, uh, and the sample sheet CSV is the listing generated before the task actually even starts on the right. This is a snippet of the tool definition for BCL convert. We can see here that it it's really clean. Uh, there's really not too much logic going and it's really easy to read um, for both the requirements and the inputs. Some expressions we repeat a lot, like take this input if not null, otherwise take that input. It might only be five lines or so, but if you need that in 20 different workflows, then that's 100 lines of wet typing. A solution might be to create a common JavaScript repository using TypeScript and auto test that, know that they definitely work as you expect them to, and then you import them instead. Here are some examples of that general glue on the left and its implementation inside a bash script on the right. This is some more logic used as workflow step glue that adds some extra checks and balances to our workflows to make sure that they're working as expected. TypeScript allows for complex JavaScript manipulations in CWL to be written in a popular programming language with type hinting for CWL class objects. Our setup allows for unit testing of functions in both TypeScript and JavaScript before the user deploys them into CWL command line tools or workflows. TypeScript's transpilation method drastically improves the ES5.1 compatibility of our expressions. There's certainly some learning curve to TypeScript, particularly those that aren't used to type languages. Coming from Python, this was pretty mind-boggling at first. The setup scripts are not trivial, and this is definitely still a work in progress. If anyone knows anything about Yarn or anything better than Yarn, please hit me up. On this, Yarn sometimes makes a node modules directory, and this can make over 10,000 files in one directory. The Common Workflow Labs CWL TS Auto module certainly needs some improvement uh, to be more user friendly. Um, and in the meantime, the Rabbix CWL TS does just fine if all you really need is the file and directory object, object classes, which has really been my scope to date. Uh, that is all I have time for. Thank you for my, to my team. Uh, Sarish, you have worked closely with on the CWL ICA repository for some time. My apologies for pushing another programming language to learn, but I think the benefits have outweighed the pain. Uh, Oliver, my boss, for letting me go down this rabbit hole. Uh, to Bruno from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center for his inputs and enthusiasm on this topic during CWL monthly catch up calls and suggesting automating the schema to TypeScript interfaces. Uh, and also, thank you to Michael Crusoe, uh, who needs no introduction here, uh, for his interest in putting his time into this space. It's been really cool to see this project gain tra traction. And lastly, here are all the links. Thank you.